and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube watching this video later on for some mono green stompy. That's right, we're bringing it back. We played it uh, about a week ago or so and did really well with it. And so let's bring it back. Um, this is this deck's all about curving out. There's a lot of uh, different. Hey, wow, we got a bunch of subs in here now. Thank you so much to the person that just gifted. 10 subs out, the anonymous gifter there. Thank you very much for a secret Santa. Gifting out some subs. Y'all get some hype in the chat. Um, but anyway, yeah, there's there's a lot of options in Mono Green Stompy. You know, like uh, Bark High Troll and Growth Chamber Guardian, those were ones that, you know, last time we played Bark High Troll, I'm going to play Growth Chamber Guardian this time um, because I think normally I'd rather have Bark High Troll, but with the Great Henge and how I, I think that the Great Henge is just such a good card that I want to emphasize this card more. I added in a third copy um, that the synergy between Growth Chamber Guardian and the Great Henge, I want to um, add in extra, or so I want Growth Chamber Guardian instead of Bark Hydro. Um, Once Upon a Time, yeah, Once Upon a Time is a really good card. Uh, I would like to have um, Once Upon a Time in the, in the deck, honestly, but the thing about it is it's not a card, I should update our sub goal, that's another sub goal hit towards our next 12 hour stream. Once upon a time is like the kind of card that I would love to play it like for zero mana and everything at the beginning of the game when it's my opening hand. But I'm not sure with this deck, if, if we're like curving out, we don't really want to cast it for two mana. Um, you know, in the late game, if we already have like the great henge in play and stuff, casting it for two mana just fine. Or, you know, after we play Nyssa. But again, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to fit it in. It's kind of hard to fit once upon a time in here i don't know i like i like the cards that we have um yeah yeah it is yeah that's a good point there roth man it could be just a really good one of i mean i could cut the 25th land i like all right fine we'll we'll cut the 25th land all right we'll play one we'll play once upon a time one of those anyway let's play some games Let's play some games. Yeah, I, I added in that extra land because of playing a third Great Henge. But if we're playing you know, Once Upon a Time, that, that could be just fine for that land slot that we'll probably get most of the time. All right, and I'll edit the deck list if Stream Decker cooperates to show that we have a Once Upon a Time in our deck. <laughs> to be honest, the only card we need is Questing Beast. Yeah, we need that, and we need uh, Vivian Arcbow Ranger. Those are the two cards that we want. Yeah, I like I like Wildwood Tracker a bunch. I like the the one mana creature. Um, not only, ugh, I don't think we can keep two land and then have four, four, five plus. Not only does the one drop help set the tone of you know starting off the game with a one mana card. But it also, it works really well with, um, obviously works really well with the Great Henge of just being a one-mana card that, that cycles when you have the Great Henge out. But also Wildwood Tracker. Um, you know, playing cheap creatures is is really good with Wildwood Tracker. Or no, sorry, it's <laughs> Wildborn Preserver. Sorry, Wild Wildwood Tracker is good with Wildborn Preserver. That's the card I was talking about. Ugh, new, new card names. They all sound the same. It's wild. So Wildborn Preserver wants you to have cheap creatures because then you can use your extra mana on the counters there why'd we cut a land <laughs> all right so we have one it's upon a time That draw is perfect. We just need to draw one more. And we get Vivian and Beast. Does Wildborn Preserver work well with Huatli, Raptor, and Venerade Luxodon? I think so. Yeah. 
Cause yeah, you, you can put the counter on with Huali's Raptor and then proliferate. Right on, you yeah, you can stack those triggers. No, I am not making this up as I go. Yeah, SV, go ahead. Idea. Yeah, you're you're good. I don't mind. This isn't a fight you can win. Here we go. Come on, land. Ugh. Where's this land at? Okay, that's good. That's not instant speed time wipe, so that's good. Land. Let's try this. Only time will tell. Hmm. So yeah, if you're in chat, if you can help SVCL out there. That's that's their girl deck, and they're struggling against Golos Field. so sad this whole game if we just had a fourth land <laughs> this is the the opposite of the Yara Citadel deck where that was also a 24 land deck where we just were hitting our 9th 10th 11th land drop every game very easily Okay. So if they don't kill Questing Beast, they just just play ramp spells. We'll have lethal next turn. Too late. I'm thinking the Great Henge is probably really slow here. Yeah, Ceratops has Trample. And Haste. We can go Ceratops. It's just it's just so bad against zombies. You know, like if they if we get to like the later game. 
And it's kind of like a car that we won in the later game. Yager! What's up, Yager? Thanks for the resub there. What about having Stone Coil Serpent instead of Wildwood Tracker? Well, Stone Coil Serpent would not. Well, the, the Once Upon a Time was probably better than a land. <clears throat> I don't know. Serpent's not a, a one drop that attacks for two, like Tracker is. Okay, we got our four lands. We don't need more. So yeah, playing the Once Upon a Time instead of the 25th land, definitely better. It's better to have Questing Beast. Razor so good. I debated not playing the Wildborn Preserver and trying to save it for after a Wrath. So we've only drawn... So last game... Last game we couldn't draw a land at all. This game we can't draw a spell at all. Because the questing beast we got in our opener... I guess... Wait, did we draw a preserver? I guess... Okay, never mind. We drew one spell. We drew a preserver. Please go, Agent of Treachery. The beast. The beast. Good job, Vale of Summer. Way to cycle. Get us to that beast. Veil stops them from slowing me down a lot with Teferi bounces, and also Agent of Treachery was a big part of how they won the first game like against Questing Beast. Nah, I don't want Voracious Hydra.
All right, let's draw a couple of lands. No. Come on, deck, draw some lands. Yay. Charming Prince is so good. So I just traded Pelt Collector for Charming Prince there. And got two damage in. That's the worst possible scenario. It's Time Wipe picks that card back up. Well, this could have been the 25th. This could have been 25th land. Uh, so that's a spot where land would have definitely been better. So first game, or like the you know, last game, said the other thing. Time wipe is so good. One side wrath. I'm just planning on playing another time wipe. My opponent got me really good with Night of Autumn, Time Wipe. Sure, Yeti. Go ahead. Absolutely. Okay.
That was just too too good there with Charming Prince, Knight of Autumn, double time wipe. This time wipes just were too good. Too good. All right. All right, let's finish getting the Simic Folio reclama Reclamation deck out there. <laughs> thanks, Yeti. Yeah, thanks, thanks for giving out a couple of codes there. Uh, yes, those last four are expired, so I can... Uh, I can change that. Okay. This deck again. Okay, let's try to draw two more lands. Be able to go like Questing Beast into the Great Henge. Yeah, they always have this Arboreal Grazer on turn one, right? Sure, sure seems like that at least. Played any reanimator decks? Yes, I played a Grixis reanimator um, a few days ago. We didn't do too well with it because I, I was trying to do too much stuff. Like I was trying to to add in like the um, draw your second card tr trigger cards, like some of those and stuff. But at the end of the the, de the video, we cleaned up the deck a lot, and I'll play it again uh, some at some point. But um, I liked how it looked af afterwards. So yeah, check check it out on the YouTube channel there. Uh, Go to you know, go over to the videos, look for Grixis Reanimator. I'm just gonna play Ceratops instead of Hydras. And I'll play one over the Great Henge. I won't bring in Veil of Summer.
Have they ever had a game where that's not been Grazer on turn one or two? Not against us. It's four for four in those games. Against us. Was there has anybody else ever played against it? Okay, now I can finish getting this Folio Reclamation video up. Perfect. All right. Golos Oko and Field of the Dead is Goloko Fields. That's a pretty good that's a pretty good name for a deck, Goloko Fields. That works. Doesn't look like we were really able to go underneath our opponent this game. Them being on the play with double grazer into Krasis. You know, turn you know, turn four, they you know already have like the four four Krasis and the Grazers have saved them so much life. So it looks like Looks like they got this game. We needed all of these, like, our Folio Reclamation deck is awesome in this matchup. This is These are the matchups that we needed with Folio Reclamation. We didn't get to play against any Golos Field of the Dead. But the mill deck is awesome there. Was it just that one deck that people play that, that you really hate, DW? Yeah, I can understand it being this one. Maybe their hand's not very good. Maybe it's just a bunch of lands in hand. Okay, you know, like that slows us down, but that takes another card out. If they just have, you know, like land, land. Nope. 
Never mind. So they just they had a land, so they drew that Golos. They definitely would have played it the turn before if they had that the turn before. Maybe I sit back and try to protect Nissa for a Nissa ult. Just three more turns for that. You stop drawing Golos. I guess they're going to go get red mana now. Blech. So we'll be able to activate Golos next turn. You know what card we haven't drawn at all? Vivian Arcbow Ranger. We have a... It's like our four of Mythic that's <clears throat> our best card in our deck. Unless it's Questing Beast. It's one of those two. No, no, you're thinking Vivian Champion of the Wilds is in the sideboard. But Arcbow Ranger is in the main. Arcbow Ranger could give this Wildborn Preserver Trample. Yeah, basically right now my, my plan is Nissa ult. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Three draws in a row. Golos, Golos, Krasis. Are you kidding me? Those are the last three draws. We're Golos, Golos, Krasis. Our last three draws were forest, forest, forest. Obviously, if they draw a sweeper, I die, obviously. I'm not playing around that at all. Yeah, just trying to make a, a really large preserver. You show remorse. I'll show the straight. Trust me, I have a plan. Preserver has reach also, so it could have blocked Krasis. This is game two, though. We got game three. We came... I don't know. We we did pretty good here, even though we were... You know, we were so slow. We did pretty good.
So you know, Ceratops is good. I mean, they do just play Voracious Hydra. No, uh, we'll play Ceratops. Can we just curve out and have Vivian Arcbo Ranger in play, please? That's all I want. I just want Vivian Arcbo Ranger in play with some creatures that we get to put counters on and give them trample and attack and kill our opponent. Not exactly the whole curve out part, but we got Vivian at least. Um, I think I cast Once Upon a Time right now, because maybe we play like a one-drop. Land of War is not legal and standard. That's just a, a horrendous Once Upon a Time by our opponent. Just draw your untap and draw your card first, and then Once Upon a Time. Yeah, yeah, our once upon a time looks better. There we go. Uh, I shouldn't have said anything about Vivian. Look at how clunky and bad this hand is. Uh, I hope so too, Ellis. I hope we get more angels soon. Unfortunately, playing creatures is like mid-range creatures is pretty tough with Oko being a card, but. All right, I did say can we curve out with Vivian, so maybe we get to curve out with Vivian. Oh, come on. I think if we drop Vivian here, we probably win. I think if we drew land and got to play Vivian. Yeah, I, I messed up. One, I missed one damage there. I wasn't really planning on playing Pell Collector, but kind of changed my mind after attacks. So yeah, I missed one point of damage there. I wasn't really planning on playing it into a Wrath, but decide if we draw. You know, if we draw a land, we're basically not going to play this Pell Collector for a while. Eh, I probably shouldn't have just played it though. Oh, non-giant. This thing's a giant. Well, that's cool. Come on, land! Uh... Yeah, we started with three lands in our hand. All I needed to do was draw one. Out of all these draws, I just needed to draw one land. Just one. We definitely won this if we if we had Vivian on turn four. I mean, now they have a million power in play. I don't th I don't necessarily think we do anymore, but we definitely would have won if we would have played Vivian on turn four. I am Scala's vengeance, and I'm coming for you next. Pick 
it's the wrong fight. basically don't want them to be able to just sit back and activate that thing at all Yeah, Yorvo is pretty cool. Magic needs more Yorvo. Less Teferi and Oko. More Yorvo. Less Agent of Treachery. Game would have been over if we drew a fourth land. By drew a fourth land, I mean drew a single land, because we kept three in our opener. All right, we'll play, we'll play one more. We're gonna play one, one more match. Those two games are sucking the life force out of me, though. We're going to play one more match. It was the, the exact opposite of what we had with our 24 land Citadel deck. It was just only, it was like all lands. We just flooded out so bad every game. This time, we couldn't draw a fourth land. Yeah, Hawkeye's giving me energy, though. Yeah, Gruel Henge performed a lot better for us than this has right now. Looks like another Field of the Dead. Maybe it's Jeskai Fires. Ooh, Jeskai. Probably. They're probably not gonna have. I guess they could have four mana wrath. I guess they could go fires wrath. With the arc bow at my side, I can't lose a fight. I'm putting. I'm doing this with the watch. counters going four and two because of deafening Clarion. I don't want to go three and three with Clarion. Good job, Hawkeye. Good job, Hawkeye. You get to be aggressive. A lot easier when we're aggressive. Yeah, so like maybe the Great Henges just don't really fit in the deck. I mean, they're, they're better against like other mid-range decks. Not really, like the control decks, like we need to get aggressive and if they kill our creatures. Okay. Hawkeye, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Hawkeye? All right, game two. Coming on. Let's go. How'd our event go? It went really, really well. You know, we went we went seven and two, so you know, like that means we were seven and one before our last loss, but that still uh, was very good overall. Man, it's so good just playing turn four Vivian Arcbow Ranger. That feels so good. We actually get to do the thing our deck is supposed to do.
Doesn't that feel so good, Hawkeye? Just a strike is pretty awesome. Okay, so what's that bird? Where's that bird at? Where's that bird at? Well, of course, with my opponent having the instant speed removal there, I wish I would have just played Vivian instead of the Ceratops and, and went with Ceratops the next turn. Um, you know, I wish I would have done that, but I didn't. Sorry I'm late. Don't worry, I got this. They are coming! Not playing around questing beast. I have to do this so I don't take lethal, of course, because they have 12 damage in the air. Sonic Bob! Thanks for the sub there. Alright, so Justice Strike. Thank you so much there, Sonic Bob. Sub number 28 on the day, two away from another sub goal. So Justice Strike and... Glass casket. Um, why Wildwood Tracker? Because it's a it's a one mana two two. It costs one mana and hits starts hitting pretty hard and you know just getting more creatures for Vivian is good. I, mean, I guess it's not always a two two. I guess we have to have another creature. Um, no, I no not necessarily control. I mean, I I don't like. I mean, I don't think that necessarily the the Simic Wishes is the the best deck to play in best of one. I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I I played it and it went well and stuff, but that doesn't doesn't mean it's the best deck to play.
nothing. Witness the ties that bind us all. Be wary of the ground you walk on. Want me to phase you out of time? Um. Oh, yes, Bertalux, yes, absolutely. Yes. Thanks. I, I honestly I I forgot about that. I'm so sorry, Bertalux. Yeah, we'll do that after after I'll this match here. Underestimate my fortitude. Oh, I am going to love tearing this place to the ground. I think they're going to have Clarion. What? Why didn't it let me tap my, my land for mana? It just happened so fast. I didn't even, it didn't even let me tap my land. For mana. Ugh. Well, I called Clarion. So I don't get to, if I would have been able to tap for mana, I would have been able to play Hey Ceratops here. So we're playing Yorvo instead. I mean, still it's a fairy. I know you can't play instance, but you can still add mana. You should still be able to add mana there. Or if I wait on Ceratops a turn. So 10, 17, so I have 17 damage here. Nah, we don't wait. Basically, waiting to play around a, a time wipe, like the next. If they just if they untap and time wipe, but honestly, like we're we're just fine if we untap and time wipe anyway. So there we go. We actually got to play Nissa and Vivian. Our deck looked better. We got to curve out a couple of times there, and our deck looked better. All right, so that's Mono Green Stompy. I'd have to say that, um, so I like, I mean, uh, I know a lot of people like, you know, question, why are we playing Wild Blue Tracker? But, you know, I like playing like this low curve and everything and curving up and 
and being able to go one drop, two drop, and you know try to play Vivian, and you know maybe another one or a two, and, and get to Vivian and and start adding counters on those things, and you get to kill your opponents really, really fast. Then again, it doesn't it doesn't always happen, it doesn't always work. Um, you know, like one one, um, but one match we only lost because we kept a three lander and, and our fourth land was not like we did not draw a fourth land um, by turn. You know, even turn six. If we would have drawn a fourth land for Vivian, we probably won. Definitely turn four or turn five if we played Vivian. And that would have been one of our two losses. Um, I'm pretty sure that was game three. Maybe it wasn't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was. Yeah, that was game three against Golos. So, like, we could have been two and, you know, we could have split with Golos if we would have just drawn a fourth land, you know, drawn one land on turn by turn four or turn five. So in those three or four draw steps. Um, so really, like those four, those first four draw steps, if we would have drawn a land, we would have won one match. Um, but yeah, like basically, this this deck's kind of under underrated of how hard it can hit. The thing though, I'm still I'm, I wanted to to try to go more Great Henge heavy here after we played the Gruel Henge deck the other day, and the Great Henge looked so good in that deck. But it didn't really work in this deck, and I think. So like that that was one thing I wanted to try was more Great Henge, but. Greyhenge didn't really work. Like, I think maybe just playing, like, three mana Vivians there instead of the Great Henges. We just never really got, got to it. Um, the Gruel Henge deck was a lot more mana creature focused. Um, yeah, there's there's a one... Uh, <clears throat> besides Yorvo, if you want another three drop, the... Um, yeah, you could go with the the Love Struck Beast. Um, you can go with that, but then also I think the, oh gosh, what's the Proliferate cards underrated? We played the Proliferate card last time. Evolution Sage. Evolution Sage is kind of underrated. That's Evolution Sage is what I cut to be able to get the extra Great Henge, and then the Once Upon a Time in here. But Evo this card's kind of underrated, especially you know like you got so much one one counter stuff play a land proliferate i don't know um but yeah there we go so that's no i would not play season of growth for just for the scry effect i think that just playing something like uh just playing another planeswalker like vivian would would be better than that because you can get like actual cards um there uh no i don't really want null hide with with like vivian and and nissa and stuff like that um don't really need Null Hide. I think I think we'd rather have Shifting Ceratops, and Null Hide gets chump blocked forever. Also, yeah, I I did. Yeah, see, like the last time we played this, we got to do that. We got to Ultimate Nissa with two. We we had two Evolution Sages in play and ticked up Nissa a bunch, and and we had a Wildborn Preserver. I think we had two Wildborn Preservers. They were both like 15, 15s or so. Like maybe one was like a twenty twenty or something like that, and then we you know Ult Nissa and all the proliferate triggers and everything. Um, we just, we played against a, a gruel deck, a gruel creature deck that just had tons of creatures and we had tons of creatures and we didn't really get to swing in and, and we just sat back and evolution saged. It was awesome. So yeah, like may, maybe we're supposed to go that route and not play the great henge. I think that's, that's like the one thing that I, I haven't really decided. I don't love voracious hydra cause it costs so much mana as we saw like with those games, like getting to four and five mana was actually kind of tough a lot of time. And like voracious hydra basically has to be four or five mana. So I think that's that's like what I'm I'm not sure about with this deck. What to do with like Voracious Hydras, Great Henges. Maybe we, you're just supposed to play a whole bunch of Once Upon a Times. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So there we go. That's Mono Green Stompy. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. And also let me know what you think um, about like those last slots. If if you're playing Mono Green yourself, let me know like what's working really well with you for your deck you know if you're going if you got a, a mono green deck that that's working really well you know feel free to link it there uh in the the comment section um but uh that's yeah that's it here for the video so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you for the next video